My name is Jacob, and I work at Chase. For the Americans in the room, um, I don't work for the US bank. I work for the International Consumer Bank. Um, and I've worked there for about three years. Now, two years ago, actually, I came here for the first time um, to AppJS conference. Not as a speaker, just as an attendee. Uh, and at this point, we had launched the Chase Bank in the UK around six months before. So at this point, we were still quite a small bank. Um, I think we had around 100,000 users. And um, we were a few front-end teams with a few front-end engineers uh, in each of those teams. But everything still felt quite small. Um, I came back here the last year. And um, at this point, Chase had grown quite a lot. So at this point, we had uh, above a million users. And we've launched uh, a few products in that time as well. So from our initial offering with uh, a current account with a linked debit card, we now had the savings um, and the linked investments. Well, today I'm here, and we now have over 2 million users. What was once quite a small project is now uh, 16 front-end teams with over 80 front-end engineers working together on one app. And the tools and utilities and kind of overall architecture of this project that we had when we were a small project is completely different to what you need when you are a bigger project with that many engineers collaborating together. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. So I like to call this micro-app architecture. Now, what is a micro-app? A micro-app is really just um, giving each of our teams their own app to develop and test um, when they're doing their development. As opposed to traditional apps where everyone builds on the same app, the moment it starts growing, the more code you add, the more test, um, the longer and complex, more complex your project becomes. And with micro apps, your project never becomes more complex than a small app. This might sound complex, but I thought, let's do it together today. So let's do it practically and build a bank together. So we go to our business people, and we ask them, what do we need in this bank? So they tell us, we're going to need a payments area, and we're going to need a support area. Now, the payments area is where you can make payments, and you can see your recurring transactions. With the support area, you can uh, contact the, the call center, or you can uh, look at frequently asked questions. Now, in a normal app, you just have all the teams contributing on this one app. But with micro apps, uh, each team gets their own app. So we will have a payments team that has their own payments app, and we'll have a support team that has their own support app. And then we also need the actual app. So the host app will then bring together all of those uh, apps. Um, so how do we do this in React Native? Well, we're using a monorepo for this. And in this demo, I'm just going to use a typical monorepo structure. So we have our apps, which is the mobile app, the payments app, and the support app. And then we can have some packages. And that's the kind of things that everyone needs, like analytics, uh, design system, networking, and so on. Now, this sounds very simple, so let's make it a bit more complicated. Let's say the business comes to us and says, we actually also want an account area in the app. So this area is where we list all the accounts for the user. They can create new accounts here. But we also want to show all the payments that are upcoming in the next 24 hours um, for those accounts. OK, well, since this is a new area, we'll have to create an account team, and we'll have to give them a micro app. But the upcoming payment widget here, that really belongs in the payments domain. And we don't want payments to add things into the account micro app, because then we're back at the first problem. So what we need is another layer in our architecture. Uh, and this is what we call feature packages. Now, feature packages is really where most of your business logic will be. 
So the micro apps really is just a thin layer where you set up the navigation structure of those micro apps and export all of that to the main app. Whereas the feature packages is where all your screens and widgets and things like this might live. And in our monorepo structure, this will look something like this. Now, I kind of want to show this in a real life scenario. So I want to show some code. And I've asked around a bit, and everyone says live demos are always a nightmare. First rule of live demos don't do a live demo. Um, I feel quite comfortable about it, though I did see Christoph's presentation before, so I have to say I'm a bit more terrified now. But let's try and see how this looks. So I'm not sure if everyone can see. But this is our monorepo. So our monorepo has all of the apps, the account app, the payments app, the support app, and also the mobile app. And then we have all our packages. Um, I've added a few as examples. Most of them are just empty folders. But I hope you understand what I mean. OK, so let's see how we run a micro app. Well, let's just go to the micro app for payments. And then we do start. Now, as you might notice now, the micro apps are just Expo apps. So if you look into the payments app, you can see that this is a normal Expo, uh, Expo app. And when I run this uh, micro app, it just contains everything that's needed for the payments team. Let's try this again. So let's try it with the support team. There we go. And again, now we're loading all of the support micro app. And since support and payments doesn't have anything in common, that means that none of the things from either of these apps is included in the other app. Um, let's do one more thing. Let's run the main app just to see that everything works together. And here's the main app. And everything works together. So the main app is just a tab bar. And then it includes all of the different micro apps um, from the other uh, apps packages. Now, let's make this a little more, more complicated. Let's say our team, our business comes to us and says, well, actually, we now want you to make a new thing. We want you to make a marketing website. Uh, this website will be an AI chatbot that potential customers can come and chat with and ask about our products. And we can guide them. Um, we know this is a completely new product that you need to build from the grounds up. So you can hire some web developers and take a year to build this product. Well, first of all, we're React Native, and this is Expo. So we don't need to hire web developers. We can just hire more React Native developers. And also because our micro app architecture, our app here, already has a lot of the capabilities like networking, analytics. We don't need to rebuild them, even though this is a separate product. So let's build this uh, micro app together. Um, and for this, I do need internet, so I hope this works. Um, to create a micro app with Expo, you just create an app. So and let's see if this works. OK, I'm going to name it Assistant. And because this is a website, we don't need a simulator anymore. So let me get rid of that. Um, and we need a browser. So let's add that to our code editor. Cool. So we now have our new micro app. Um, and I'm going to change something in the. Well, first of all, when Expo creates a new app, it gives you a lot of template. Uh, and we don't need it in this micro app. So first, let's reset it to a plain app. Uh, and this command comes straight with Expo. And then I need to change the package JSON a bit, because when you're working with Monorepo, you need to make sure that all of these um, versions are aligned. Oops. And also. Uh, when using Expo in monorepos, you do need a bit of a different start command, or you need to pass some uh, arguments to it. So I've just set it up. 
But in general, if you're running this micro app, you can just use MPX Expo Start. OK, so let's start this new micro app. And let's open it in a web browser. So here's a micro app. Uh, it's very easy to create. And let's go and change a bit. So first of all, we don't need a tab bar in, in our in our new micro app, we just need the website itself. So we're talking with, with our team, and they want us to add a, a nice illustration into our app. So let's do that. Now, our design system already has all of these illustrations, so we can just import that. Ah. Beautiful. And then let's add our AI chatbot. Now, I'm not going to write it today, so I'm just going to import it from the feature package. And here we go. Maybe let's wrap it in a, another design system component just to make it look like our banking app here. Nice. We managed to create that pretty quickly because we're using all the capabilities that we've already written. Now, we're ready to launch this. And even though this is a micro app within our project, we don't need to integrate it into our main app. We can launch this as a completely separate app, even though we're using the same packages um, that our real app is using. So let's go to the business and say, we're done. We developed this. It went a lot faster. We're ready to release. And then the business says, uh, so we did some more analysis, and we realized that the target user is not potential users. It's our already existing customers. We actually want this AI chat to be inside of our banking app, not as a separate website. So why don't you hire some more mobile developers for the assistant team? And you can take another year to build this inside of our app instead. Well, now you can tell them that we don't need to hire more people. Our assistant team is already React Native developers, uh, so they can build everything inside of our app. But also, we don't need a year to do this, because we built this as a micro app inside of our project. So let's see how we can add this into our project. Let's go back to our simulator. Let's go to the mobile app. Let's start the app. And here we have our app again. So now we want to add our assistant into this app. Well, we're using Expo Router, so we just have to create another tab. Let's call it Assistant. And let's just import assistant screen from a micro app. And already, it just works inside of our real app. So we can go back to our business and say, well, we did deliver this already. We can just put it in our app. Thank you. So micro apps are really easy tools to make sure that the development for our teams can be completely independent. Uh, we can build these as standalone apps and even release them as standalone apps or websites. Um, but we can also integrate them together into our main app, uh, whether that was the purpose from the start or if the business changes its mind. Now, with these micro apps, teams can also build uh, dedicated CI and testing. So when your project changes and it becomes bigger, it is quite common that you know one team changes something, it breaks things for other team. Well, with micro apps, you make sure that all of those things are contained within the team. I want to focus on two things before I end this talk. And the first thing is, this example that I gave is very simple. Now, in real micro apps or in real projects, uh, these micro apps would have a lot more complicated um, navigational structures. For example, our account team might have account opening journeys or account closures, and the payments team will have payment journeys. And 
in React navigation, this is actually really simple. Because when you create a navigator, it's really a, just a component. And you can consume that in your micro app or expose it to your mobile app. But when using Expo Router, this is a bit more tricky because it's no longer components. It's file structures. Um, you can do this, though. Uh, so you'll have to read a bit more on their website. There's uh, really good uh, guides on how to do monorepos with Expo. Uh, when it comes to the actual Expo Router, it's not exactly clear, but if you do trick around a bit with uh, uh, Metro config and also a bit with how you initiate things, it does work with Expo Router as well. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is my favorite part of micro apps, and that is the fact that we're separating business logic and our platform logic. Um, and let me give you an example of that. So if we're looking at our platform module here, the encryption module, it might look like this. Um, at Chase, we're using these um, just native modules. So we will have a Swift implementation and an iOS implementation. Now, a common scenario for a lot of React Native developers these days is, can we do it on web now? So React Native can be on web. But if you have a really large project, it's quite difficult to actually adapt it to that. If anyone has tried, you add React Native web, you start figuring out with Webpack, and then you run your project just to realize it breaks somewhere. With micro apps, this is actually really easy, or it becomes a lot easier, because you can create a micro app for web. And then you can include none of your business layer. You can include the platform package or core package directly. And then you can make sure that um, this package works on web. And then you can do this for all of your uh, core packages and platform packages. And then you can do it for all the micro apps you have. And then you can turn it on for the real app. And this is really good, because it means that it's quite easy to go between platform and platform. And as we heard today, there's a lot of different React Native platforms now. So whether it's web or Apple Vision Pro or tvOS, uh, you can always uh, easily adapt it. And the whole process becomes very iteratively, instead of this huge project that you don't really know what to do with. But this also actually becomes a very powerful tool for managing your platform. So let's say another scenario. You are a React Native app on the old architecture, and you want to go to the new architecture. Well, if you just turn on the new architecture, your app breaks. You don't really know where. You don't really know why. Well, with micro apps, you can just create a micro app in your um, repo that has the new architecture enabled. And then you can include module by module, adding support one by one, step by step, until all of your micro apps can have the new architecture um, enabled. But also, I mean, if you're going from a React Native app with native modules to new architecture, why not just go to an Expo app with Expo modules? A lot of our apps were created a long time ago when Expo might not have been the perfect option uh, when you had a lot of native code. But with micro app architecture, you can just create a micro app that supports Expo modules or a micro app that's completely Expo. And then you can include module by module, adding support for Expo modules. And then in the end, you can actually support Expo. And I think this is really exciting. I think really, for the first time ever, we have kind of the uh, ability to create these very complicated apps uh, that has the potential to outlive the platforms they're currently being built for. If you're using tools like React Native and Expo, and if you have a really good architecture, which is scalable and maintainable, then you can go to any platform that your users are on, uh, whether that platform already exists or it's something that will be added in the future. That's everything I had to say today. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone at Chase. There's a lot of people who've been working really hard on what I presented today. So thank you to them. Thanks for everyone here who listened to me. Um, if you have any questions, please come and talk to me. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.